Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jeremy Adams, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast. I am Phil. Joining me as always, the happiest master of the core it is. (laughs) I am Will. Hey, everyone. That's right, kids, because not only are we talking, not only is Hal Jordan back in our uh, reviews back from 2005, but Hal Jordan's back in the present, too. That is correct. And in a very good way. Yes. So, kind of like in two ways, Hal Jordan is back, and Will already cannot be more excited. That's right. (laughs) And Zelda. And Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom came out. <laughs> Been playing a little of that, too. Oh, you know, nice. Like all day. So. <laughs> What's that? On, where do you play that on? Nintendo Switch? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, so when you were yep. traveling, you were able to take that with you, huh? Uh, I did not. Oh. So, so I got, I was traveling. I got back on Thursday afternoon. Hmm. Had to go to a job thing from five to seven came home went to gamestop and stood in line from 10 o'clock to about 11 30 wow and got zelda wow <laughs> for an act- it was fun for- yeah wow it was actually fun there was there was a pretty long line there so it was uh just hanging out and chatting zelda with other uh other zelda fans do you listen to podcasts well let me tell you <laughs> I know podcasts. I, of course, love Hal <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Speaking of, yes, uh, let's get into that. Green Lantern number one came out this week, kids. It did indeed. What's so, your report card, Phil? What'd you think, man? I like it. I like it. I like the direction we're going in. I mean, of course, it wasn't enough yet, but yes. Uh, so what did you think? I mean... We were wor- you were worried about oh they were just going to bring I knew Jeremy Adams wasn't going to let us down with the, with the continuity yeah. so I don't know why they were keeping that under wraps or in that but you know because it sounded like the Guardians were quarantining Earth it's it's the United Planets kids yep exactly because the Guardians are still gone at this point um I you know I'm I know we can't have all the answers at once but from the the story with Hal you know we had a you know a month ago and now. You yeah. know, and the differences between those things and, and what's going on with what happens at the end of the book. So, you know, I'm not going to talk spoilers here, but I'm, I'm even more, I think, confused by John's current status quo, right? Yeah. Cause it doesn't, I mean, again, we don't really get any answers, but we don't even know if John has a ring at this point. He doesn't need one, right? He's two ascended, be- he's two ascended beings. Uh, hyper time yeah. whatever of it is and, and then and the John story by Philip Kennedy Johnson I wonder if he's ever going to address that last page we got in uh, the Emerald Knights book you know when John's like oh, I'm going to go find my wife yeah because Zanshi and Kat Matui are in the dark sector apparently so well we know Zanshi is because that's where that book ended up on was mm-hmm. you know a Zanshi that had never never been uh, blown up so so are we ever going to get to that, or is John just uh, taking a pit stop and visiting what was it, his grandmother? It's like, oh. Well, but there's but there's a John that's doing that, right? In oh, the that's <laughs> right. There's two. Oh, yeah. There's two. So, I mean, and that's that's not Philip Kennedy Johnson's No, that wasn't his fault. deal. That's yeah, no. something that he's going to have to deal with. It's just, it was, um, don't get me wrong, it was good. It was just an interesting way to start because... Uh, it raises. There's already a lot of questions around John's status quo, mm-hmm. and this just raises more. You know, that's I what did, I, I, 
that's that's why I was hoping for an ongoing like they originally planned like it, like John getting his own book because in a mm-hmm. backup you're only getting a couple pages a month and it's like ugh, just teasing us even more. And he only got like three pages and the rest were off in another universe with the uh, uh, what was it the Radiant Dead the Radiant the Radiant Queen yes uh, something like that oh yeah and a, a young guy gardener. <laughs> Yes, uh, or an old guy gardener and a younger Kyle that from a different universe. I... Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought the younger one was gardener, but no, no, he's yelling at the old guy gardener. So yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, but it's the multiverse. <laughs> yes, whatever this thread is. Once John Stewart, so yeah. Mm-hmm. But Hal Jordan, I mean, come on, come on. What? How did you feel about the oh, yeah. Hal Jordan thing? I mean. He's back on I, Earth. He was kind of, I mean, was was he flirting with Carol? Was he? Oh, definitely. <laughs> you know, I think, I don't know. I, I found it interesting that, you know, at the point, at the end of the, you know, the flashback, you know, he was, you know, really starting to doubt if he'd made the right decision in, you know, telling the United Planets to stick it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think we, we find out a little bit uh, that, you know, this is who he is without a ring, because we know who he is with a ring. Yes. And, you know, he's uh, he's pretty extraordinary without a ring, too, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also found it funny, uh, well, who well who he was fighting at the, how he was fighting at the end of his story, or, or what they were wearing, considering what we're covering tonight. Yeah, it's pretty appropriate, right? <laughs> <laughs> that they just bought online. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like nobody's monitoring that, like the FBI, the DEO, nobody's DO, like somebody, yeah. nobody's <laughs> monitoring. Oh yeah, uh, exotic Good alien weaponry her. on sale <laughs> on online. Yeah, come and get it. <laughs> Although I do like how Jeremy Adams like brought up, you know, I, I mean, when they bring up these these worlds are also fantastical, but I do like when they. Uh, consider the real world like jeremy adams did here where it's like yeah how might not be able to just like jump back into a fighter plane because oh yeah now we're using drones and uh yeah Mm -hmm. well you know and it's it's really um it's it's also even more appropriate because you know you look at a lot of those themes are present in the one through six that we're talking about you know from from 2005 right Mm -hmm. um because you know he's back you know it's not you know, it's there because things have changed, but, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's, it's a lot more drastic of a change because, you know, Hal hasn't really been back, you know, since, you know, once, once he leaves earth, he comes back for part at the end of green lanterns, I think. And he's there f- until the first issue of the Grant Morrison series. And then he's, you know, back off in space. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, he hasn't been around for, on earth for an extended period of time a long time quite Pro- an extended yeah yeah probably not too long after what we're covering today <laughs> <laughs> oh and is that it uh they they're pretty much have a hood on and uh they're sitting in shadow but that's you know who sit, sitting in the bar right uh sitting in a, oh yeah yes definitely with yeah. with that sinister I, I with that sinister look in their eyes <laughs> I don't think that's a spoiler. That's on alternate covers and all the solicits. So, yeah, definitely Sinestro. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, not a lot on Sinestro, but... Mm. <laughs> yeah, but... Hal's back. Uh, so, I'm trying to remember. Did Carol's husband eventually get killed? Because now she got a boyfriend. Well, I know eventually she gets with Kyle, because, you know, he's a superior, yeah. superior Green Lantern. But, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to find out about that. Oh you know, yeah. As the series progresses somewhat because she gets drawn back into the Star Sapphires definitely, you know, pretty soon. I love that when he's talking on the radio. It's like Roger that queen of the Zamoron. She, she, and someone's like, "What's a Zamoron?" <laughs> he's just messing with you. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I love uh well, we, I mean, yeah, spoilers they're doing the whole drone thing, but I love he's flying a green plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, what I mean, uh, but with Hal, that's probably like you know, oh, this is some slow AI can think he gets what he's usually using. Oh yeah, exactly. The ring. <laughs> yes. So uh, okay, I do have a spoilery question. So okay. anybody out there that has not read it yet and you do not want to be spoiled, stop listening now or mute it or whatever, and I'll give you a thumbs up 
when I'm done and you can, you know, turn it back on. Okay, here we go. So that ring, he formed it out of willpower. Is that I? That's what I'm wondering because I was like, because uh, I was like, I did. I don't think we saw a ring on his finger, so I was like, did he have it just on him somewhere and it just recharged it, or was yes, did he did he somehow build one out of willpower? And if it is, is it just temporary and he's going to have to tinker with the Manhunter bits to make himself a ring? Because there was something about hot wire and a ring, yeah. right? So, um, I, but, because I'll be honest, I don't. I like him having a standard ring. Yeah. Because he can do, you know, awesome things with just a standard ring. He doesn't have to have a special ring to do special things. So anyway, I was just curious what you thought about that. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering because it looked like it appeared out of nowhere. That's I, again, I wish he, I hope he has a standard ring too. But so mm-hmm. did they confiscate his ring and battery? So um, even if he, that is a mm-hmm. regular ring, he's going to have to recharge eventually. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, I'm going to give the thumbs up so people can come back. Hey, you're back. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. So so I, I, I don't think I have to go out on a limb here and assume you're giving this an A. I, uh, oh, yes, definitely. Definitely, definitely. an A, yes. Mm-hmm. And again, this was in the preview pages, so I'm not giving anything else away. But yeah, this that needs to be a poster, that Hal Jordan. The, oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> the colors, the, nice. the art, yeah, it's all, yeah. Yeah, the, the colors, the art, the, the lettering, everything. This is this is the writing is, is really good. I'm looking forward to this this run. Yeah, and everything I saw online, I mean, it looks like it's getting a positive response. So Jeremy Adams, mm-hmm. well, and the whole team, good job. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely, we're giving this high marks here, kids. A's. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good when you you know you get to the end and you're like, oh, I want more. <laughs> Yeah, give me more now. <laughs> exactly. It's not like a 90s guy gardener, and it's just like, oh, thank God that's over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, all right. So, should we jump into tonight's issues? Because, I mean, we have a lot to <laughs> cover tonight. We do. Yes, I see you down there, buddy. <laughs> oh, did he miss you? Yes, Otis is Malvy. Yes, you're Malvy Hound Dog, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I can't play right now, bud. <laughs> Oh no. Call me Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yes, let's uh All right. Let's dive right in, sir. So, I I assume we'll we'll start with the Secret Files and Origins issue. Mm-hmm. I All think right. that was the uh the story in that was reprinted in the hardcover and the trade, I think, right? Yeah, well, well, uh which one? Cuz there's actually two. There's the one with like him, like the flashback with his father and everything, and then the second one, I think that's the one you were telling me about. Like, it was like the uh printed in that R- Wizard special, the second story, the one with uh, you know, oh, Parallax is coming. Oh yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that they put that they put that one. Actually, they put both of those in the Rebirth trade uh collection as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, because it's uh, basically those two stories. Everything else is basically like you know, like um, character uh, profiles and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I mean makes kind of sense because uh, like if you're if you had just been reading the Cal series and you just you know you got the new series, of yeah. things, like, you know, give you, give people like a uh, crash course on how Jordan, Guy Gardner, John Stewart, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so Green Lantern, Secret Files, and Origins, number one from June 2005. Uh, the first story is Flight, uh, written by Jeff Johns, uh, pencils and inks by Darwin Cook, uh, another another creator we lost way too soon. Uh, mm-hmm. Colors Dave Stewart, letters Jared K. Fletcher, and editors Ivan Cohen and Stephen Wacker. Uh Hal Jordan and Cal Rayner use their rings to fly to Edwards Air Force Base. On the way, Hal remembers back to his childhood. Every morning before school, he snuck onto the base to watch his father pilot a jet overhead. Hal's mother disapproves, so they finally had to stop. A few nights later, Hal's father brought him to the base for a plane ride together. Years later, Hal and Carol Ferris flew in a plane together while on a date. It was her first time back in the air since her father's heart attack required her to manage the company. She and Hal kissed after landing. In the present, Hal and Cal arrive at the base. Hal takes them up for a jet ride so that Cal can experience the thrill of flying without a ring. All right, so what you think about your boy? (laughs) (laughs) 
It's a good story. Uh, I love it's like the same security guard each time, and he just gives me an order. Every time, you know, yeah. For, and, of course, they, you know, adjusting for inflation. First it's a 5, then it's a 10, then it's a 20. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Harold. And, yeah. it, you know, Caraway and Cal are just like, okay, Harold. <laughs> Yeah, this is a this is a really good, really good story. Yes, yeah, it really gets in it. And I mean, and, and as we'll even get to uh, in the other issues tonight, I mean, Jeff Jones will call back to that too. That the whole thing with yeah. him and the father and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I think it kind of points out, you know, with Cook's art, you can see how it's it's got a real classic line to it. Yes, and you can see how good Hal's costume looks, but how not as good Kyle's looks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Again, it's like it depends on the artist. Yeah, I mean, because and Darwin Cook is a great artist, and it, but it's just like at first, that like that first time we see him, I didn't re- realize it was Kyle unless I until I looked into the insignia on his chest. I'm like, oh yeah, that's Kyle. Yeah, that's Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that costume's not good. Again, very, 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 again, and again, I say that, be you know, when it's like, you know, when only certain artists can make that good, it's like, you know, a good, mm-hmm. a good, you know, a good costume, pretty much any professional comic book artist should be able to do. I mean, probably one of the greatest of all time, Spider-Man. I mean, that Ditko stuff, Spider-Man costume, I mean, they'll refine it little tweaks over the years, but I mean, yeah. for the most part, that thing really hasn't changed. Well, and you know, it's as, as amazing as an artist as he was. Uh, George Perez would usually design really intricate costumes. Mm. I mean, look at how Nightwing started off and it was gradually simplified and simplified and simplified and streamlined until it's to, you know, what we kind of know of today, right? Yes. High collar. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy I know likes Nightwing. I don't know. I don't remember who he is. I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, you want to get to the other story, which again, it's kind of you know takes place before rebirth, so maybe we should, or mm-hmm. yeah, we should have covered that last week. But uh, the day before, <laughs> which again written by Jeff Johns, penciler Ethan Von Skyver, uh, inker mm-hmm. Prentice Rollins, colorist Moose Bauman, and letterer Rob Lee. Uh, Prior to the events of Green Lantern Rebirth, Cal Rayner is in Sector 3599. He defeats an alien creature, then then lands among the local people. They grab at him while repeating a sentence, which Cal's ring translates as, Parallax is coming. In California, Hal Jordan uses the power of the Spectre to save a falling jet. The Spectre says the act is a waste of time because there is a murderer in Italy that deserves vengeance. Hal splits apart from the ent- entity while wearing his Green Lantern costume. They argue about using violent methods. Another version of Hal separates, wearing his parallax costume. The two versions struggle, then merge with the Spectre again. So yeah, pretty much. Again, this was what from that wizard. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sp- yeah. Uh, oh yes, and that was also reprinted in the Green Lantern Rebirth trade paperback. Yep. <laughs> oh here it is. Yes, it originally appeared in Wizard X from two thousand four. So. Yeah, so probably should have talked more about that last week, but yes, uh, that's all right. Yeah, we got we got the important stuff last week. <laughs> I guess they're like, hey, if you didn't pick up that wizard issue, here you go. Here you go. Here it is now. <laughs> but no, I I mean I re- that one wasn't bad, but yeah, I did like that Hal Jordan story, and I think it kind of boiled down, you know, who Hal Jordan is and. What we're going to get to with Jeff Johns, where it's like, you know, the father, you know, basically encouraged them to fly. And his mother's like, don't you dare. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was, uh, you know, which, you know, we get at when we're going to start talking about this, you know, living in fear, you know, being always mm. overcautious and all that versus Hal, who, you know, figures things out as he's falling after he's taken the leap. Right. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's your plan? Let's hit him hard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to hit him with a big, giant boxy glove. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to, di- ready to dive into the uh, issues? You bet. The other Green Lantern number one we're talking about tonight? <laughs> That's right. How It's like we planned it, right? Almost, yeah, I know. <laughs> see, Will's like, see, the universe wanted it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so we'll start off. We're going to cover the first six issues of Green Lantern, uh, volume four. <laughs> So, Green Lantern Volume 4, number one, from July 2005, uh, Airborne. 
Uh, writer Jeff Johns, pencilers Ethan Von Skyver and Carlos Pacheco, inkers Ethan Von Skyver and uh, Jesus Moreno, uh, colorist Moose Bauman, letterer Rob Lee, and editors Peter Tomasi and Harvey Richards. Several years ago, Green Lantern Abin Sir crash landed on Earth. He summoned former test pilot Hal Jordan to become his successor. Today, Hal asks his friend Shane Sellers for help in regaining his job, his test pilot job. John Stewart calls Hal for help in investigating an abandoned spacecraft in Earth orbit. They discover the craft is empty and determine it was designed for a one-way trip. Hal returns to his home in the newly rebuilt Coast City, where few are willing to live since its destruction by Hank Henshaw and Mongol. <laughs> Uh, Hal reunites with his brother Jim and tries to convince him to return to Coast City. Suddenly, a damaged aircraft flies by Hal's apartment. He rushes off to help it land and makes two discoveries. The pilot of the plane is a beautiful blonde named Jillian Cowgirl Pearlman. Uh, keep an eye on her, kids. And the engine of the plane is clearly of extraterrestrial origin. Meanwhile, two Air Force officers are transporting a mysterious cargo by truck. After they stop at a roadside diner, a robotic humanoid appears at the diner and kills a couple, saying it is looking for its predecessor. A voice from inside the truck's cargo en route to Rich, uh, Edward says, No man escapes. <laughs> All righty. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, and I f I'd forgotten about this because it's been a while since I read this. Uh, yeah, when Hal and John discuss uh, the inactive status of the Green Lantern Corps. This implies that this arc takes place before the Green Lantern Corps recharge miniseries. I, I forgot about that, too. Which, <laughs> for some reason, in my memory, I just remember, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, they just, like, restarted the Corps by issue one. No, 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 yeah. no. We actually get to that uh, in a couple of issues, I think. Kilowog and... Yeah, yeah. When they're back on Oa, and then I forget which issue. I don't think. It, I don't think it's this one. It might be one of the later ones. But uh, one, don't they say something like, "Oh yeah, once uh, Ganthan and the Guardians locked the locked uh, Parallax in the battery, then he uh, Ganthan aged up the Guardians." I'm like, didn't they look aged up when they were locking him away? I thought they were. Yeah, I thought they already aged themselves up. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe that wasn't the original plan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of course, yes, kids, most of the basic infrastructure of Coast City was uh, rebuilt by How is the Spectre and Green Lantern Rebirth, see, last week. Mm -hmm. And then, I guess uh, it says, like, apparently others took the initiative to go ahead and rebuild the city. <laughs> <laughs> and How Jordan's pilot call sign is Highball. Yep. <laughs> and 0000, zero, zero, zero is, the Green, is the Green Lantern code for abandoned spacecraft. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what, I mean, what, what did you think? I mean, again, we'll, we'll be brought in the other Jordan brother now. I was just waiting mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, they're talking about their other brother being dead. I'd be like, oh, well, you ever, how, what happened to his daughter? <laughs> he doesn't remember anything about the Spectre. Is that just like a, co <laughs> is that just like cosmic, uh, you know, like Spectre-y things where it's like nobody remembers that niece? Cause like his, his other brother so. doesn't bring it up. The JLA never brings it up. I'm just like, really? No one's questioning, oh, hey, where's your niece at? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, and <laughs> I love when uh, cow, uh, Cowgirl gets out of the plane. You know, this blonde woman. He's like, ah, yellow, my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and, and again, we're getting more Manhunters. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, what did you think about this when you read it the first time? Were you just like a yeah, good start? Uh, oh, I mean, it was it was Jeff Johns, Carlos Pacheco. I mean, I was like, yes, this is awesome. I mean, that it's it's a it was a really I think great way to relaunch the main Green Lantern series. Mm -hmm. And I'd forgotten that he and John worked together a bit more, you know, in these first few issues than I had I had you know, remembered. So I think that was good. And, you know, we've got the art was spectacular and, you know, we, again, we get more of who Hal is yeah. and everything. I think there was an interview. We may have chatted about this before. I can't remember, but uh, I think there was an interview with Jeff Johns when he was talking about creating Simon Baz. Mm. Uh, and, you know, he said, Green Lantern should always be about overcoming fear. That's, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about overcoming fear. Now, 
there are different types of fear to overcome, right? You know, which is, you know, we've got Jessica, who is, you know, agoraphobic and, you know, uh, has lots of different fears that she has to overcome to be a Green Lantern. And then Simon, you know, people were afraid of him because he was, you know, Muslim, Mm -hmm. uh, which was, you know, that was around the time that, uh, you know, Jeff Johns was trying to address that in the comics. So it's, I think, uh, I think this is definitely on on target and on, on theme, you know. Oh yeah, and especially when they find that abandoned spacecraft and it's yellow, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that would have stopped us before." And yeah. Now, like, <laughs> yeah, now we know the key. You have to know fear and deal. Yeah, yeah. deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It. Uh, it's. It's. It's a really good start to it. Yeah. Excellent start. I just remember the first time I read it, and I was like, "Come on, come on, let's just restart the core. Let's not pull another road back." And you know, the beginning, yeah. of the, <laughs> the last volume. I'm like, "Let's not do a, the slow build. Come on, let you know. Let's let's decide. Let's bring back the core and <laughs> move on. Yes. <laughs> let's shoot those rings out, which we will get to here. So, all right, I'm ready for two. Uh, number two. All right, kids. So green. Darn ads. Uh, there we go. Green Lantern, Volume 4, Number 2, from August 2005. No Fear. Uh, writer Jeff Johns, penciler Carlos Pacheco, inker Jesus Marino, color Moose Bauman, editor, editor Rob Lee. Yeah, so basically same team, but Ethan isn't here. I, uh... <laughs> General Stone from Edwards Air Force Base arrives to reclaim the test jet. Jordan, as Green Lantern, asks about the extraterrestrial technology, but Stone de- uh, declares it classified. Hal remembers that he lost his original test pilot job for punching stuff. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, John Stewart investigates the diner murders in connection with the abandoned spacecraft and informs Jordan. Hal returns home to his brother, Jim, who begs for Hal to leave Coast City and the Air Force behind. He declines. Jim leaves Coast City. Hal returns to Edwards to talk to Shane Sellers. Sellers tells him if he wants his old job, he'll need to apologize to General Stone. The truck with the mysterious cargo arrives at the base, then explodes, with a damaged Manhunter robot emerging. Hal quickly changes into Green Lantern and engages the robot in battle. During the battle, he is knocked into a hangar where he sees Abin Sur's ship has been rebuilt. Just then, the robotic humanoid figure appears and declares the Manhunter robot obsolete. The skin melts off the humanoid to reveal that it is a new and improved Manhunter robot. Uh, oh yeah, and then this uh, the little uh, the damaged Manhunter robot is referred to as Manhunter nineteen eighty eight point two eight one four by the newer design. Most likely, yeah. the nineteen eighty eight is a reference to the year of the Millennium event. <laughs> Millennium crossover. Yep. Yes. Because <laughs> isn't that isn't that the other thing where uh, the generals basically like, oh yeah, you know, that's basically where they grab the the Manhunter after the uh, Millennium event. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they really, if he really wanted to sales himself in trouble, he could have just swung by a, a uh, art gallery in Manhattan. Exactly. <laughs> we Man- know where the head of one is. You know? I, there's just Manhunters <laughs> littered all over this planet, I swear. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, another good issue. I mean, we get another good, like big cliffhanger at the end here, keeping our interest. <laughs> yep. Uh, bu- 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 Oh, yeah, and I guess, uh, yes, his brother Jim taking after, you know, his mother and being like, no, it's too dangerous. Leave the Air Force. Leave the Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, should have been like, that's the other reason I'm alive right now is to all the superhero <laughs> stuff. Exactly. <laughs> oh, what about that running gag? I swear at least one in is- one time every issue we read this week, it's like, so, you know, people are like, ah, oh, Green Lantern, I thought you were dead. <laughs> yeah, that is, it is a running gag. <laughs> It would have been even funnier if he would have pulled the old X-Men line. I was. I got better. <laughs> uh, Alright. Uh. <laughs> Alright. So anything else on this or you want to get to the next one? Let's jump to the next one. Alright. Because I think that's the wrap up to this first part. It's hard to remember. I, I read most of these. Like I read these in like a uh, big chunk. So. Mm-hmm. Alright. I didn't want to put it down. Oh yeah. That's, I know. This is the airplane scene. Which we'll get to. I, I kind of remembered it differently <laughs> in my head, but yeah. Uh, uh-huh. All right. So Green Lantern number three, September 2005. <laughs> Flight delay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, same team. 
The new Manhunter model attacks Hal Jordan and it opens up to reveal a Green Lantern power battery inside its head, which drains Hal's ring most of its, which drains Hal's ring of most of its power. The damaged Manhunter flies away with the newer new model in pursuit. Hal and Shane convince General Stone to allow Hal to fly one of the jets after them, but not before Hal punches Stone in the jaw. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Man, since he's been back, man, he's been he's been uh, he's been decking guys left and right. Batman, generals, exactly. yeah. <laughs> General Stone reluctantly explains to Hal that the U.S. military confiscated Abin Sur's spaceship spacecraft many years ago. They were unable to fix the ship until they found a damaged Manhunter robot after the Millennium event <laughs> seven weeks ago. The robot turned itself on. The new Manhunter damages the old Manhunter enough that it lands in the middle of Coast City and activates its self-destruct sequence, which would destroy the entire city. The new Manhunter turns its attention to Hal and pulls him out of the cockpit of his jet. In free fall, a powerless Jordan recites the Green Lantern Oath as he pulls the robot's head Green Lantern battery off. <laughs> well, With his ring recharged, Hal grabs the self-destructing Manhunter and takes it into space. The robot admits that it is afraid of ceasing to exist shortly before detonating. The next day, Hal talks to General Stone about a pilot position. Stone accepts Hal's apology and admits that he determined that Hal is Green Lantern from the style of his punch. <laughs> uh, that night, Hal sees his brother moving in the coast city with his family. In a short epilogue, a robed figure acting as the new Grandmaster of the Manhunter surveys a group of imprisoned Green Lanterns, all of whom were supposedly killed by Hal Jordan when he was Parallax. Get to that soon. All right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that that scene with the um with the, with him uh, jumping out of the basically out of the plane to recharge his ring i remember that differently i uh, for some reason maybe i don't know what it is time or what but i just remember him going like head first at the you know pointing the plane right at the manhunter and basically like the cockpit exploding and him just like <laughs> throwing his fist at, it, at the manhunter's head but i don't know it's still cool man oh yeah it is cool yeah <laughs> And again, maybe it's like a different continuity now after Crisis, but I'm like, didn't like how like drop a mountain on Abin Sur's spaceship? I thought so. Uh, we're gonna get you know when we do Secret Origin, we're gonna get yeah, a nice maybe revamp. A, yeah. So that that'll hopefully you know kind of put all of those continuity concerns at bay. Yeah. It's, I guess it's another uh, uh, Hal's niece. Okay. Yeah, but we did get now. Didn't this end with a kind of an epilogue with um, the Grandmaster on the planet? Yes. On the Manhunter planet? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, with the imprisoned Green Lantern. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I forgot. Uh, yeah, the identity of the mysterious new Grandmaster will be revealed in issue 11, kids. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a little bit. Uh, oh, we know. <laughs> I think so. I, that's another thing. I don't know if I actually remember. So it's going to be. A, it might be a somewhat of a surprise to me. Yeah, I think I know who it is, but I'm not for certain. But yeah, kids, it's been a while since we've seen them because I list the Green Lanterns here. Uh, it's Budika, Chazalon, Honu, Jack, Jack T. Chance, <laughs> Kihon, Lara, Tomar Two, and Creon. Man, it's been a while since we discussed them. And they, yeah, they were pre-Emerald Twilight, Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> and I was going to say, what, I think uh, with the Emerald Twilight, didn't we do that late? That was like episode 34, so, I think. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been on, <laughs> probably been 80, 90 episodes since we talked about them. Yep. And then uh, I know that Boudica, you know, I think she becomes an Alpha Lantern. And I yeah. I don't remember the Alpha Lantern story, but that's, you know, a good, what, 24? That's, that's in like the third year of Green Lantern Corps, I think, is Alpha Lanterns, maybe? Maybe. Again, it's like been so 27, long. 27, 28, 29, somewhere in there, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I read them, too, yeah. We'll kick it, we'll kick it past Rebirth. He reads that every year, and he's like, ah. Yeah, okay. Rebirth. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we get to number four? You bet. All right. And another figure that got teased during Rebirth last week. All right. Green Lantern number four from October 2005. <laughs> Alienated. 
<laughs> Writer Jeff Johns, penciler and inker Ethan Vaughn Skyver, colorist Moose Bauman, letterer Rob Lee, and editors Peter Tomasi and Michael Siglane. Uh, outside Coast City, two soldiers are driving along the road late at night and run down a little gray alien. As the two soldiers look at it, the alien dies, saying that it just went out for a cigarette. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I tell you. Smoking will kill you, kids. <laughs> Hal Jordan observes the recreation of the Green Lantern Corps, finally, with Kilwag. Yep. <laughs> the chief trainer of the Corps. Kilwag explains that after Parallax was defeated, Ganthet accelerated the infant guardians of the universe to adulthood. There we go. Then they locked themselves in the Citadel, making new power rings and talking to Kilwag via his ring. The rings began uh, sector scans four days earlier and haven't stopped since. Several veterans will be reinvited to join, but the majority of the Green Lantern Corps will be newcomers. For old time's sake, Hal and Kilwag engage in a hand-to-hand -hand sparring match in a mud marsh, but Hal is distracted by a telepathic voice. His ring intercepts a call to his home phone on Earth. General Stone needs Green Lantern's help. <laughs> that was so funny when the, all the new Green Lanterns like, Who's that Earth guy? <laughs> They're letting er <laughs> Earthlings in the corner. now? <laughs> but how? We're extinct. <laughs> but you could just see the relief on Hal's face. He's like, they don't know who I am and what I did. He's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, Hal arrives and scans the alien, discovering it is not an alien at all, but an, evol but an evolved human. Stone receives a call from Bell Reeve. Hector Hammond wants to talk to Green Lantern about the body. So see, kids? Salmon Rebirth. He's back. Mm -hmm. mm. Hal visits Hammond's cell, demanding to know who is responsible for the evolution. Hammond was evolved under similar circumstances, but is unwilling to talk without experiencing some of Jordan's memories. Hal allows this, but Hammond goes too far and steals too many memories, prom prompting Hal to beat him. Ah, more fisticuffs. <laughs> Uh, Hammond admits that all he knows is that they are aliens performing experiments and they are in Coast City now. Meanwhile, here's this issue's cliffhanger. A newly mutated shark emerges from the water and devours a couple. Uh, so... <laughs> So we're really diving back into that uh, classic rogues gallery. Hector Hammond. We're going to get we tease the shark here. The shark. And coming up a certain uh, one-handed villain. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Talk to the black hand. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. We saw that when uh, Hal was talking to Kilog, we saw all the rings going out. But, yes, we did see one ring go out set for Sector 1417, the home sector of Sinestro. Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder who that might be. Star Nick. Sorry. <laughs> uh, w was there someone before her? Because it's saying here, presumably the ring recruits Tarkus Wynn. W -H -I -N. Oh, I guess. And then he dies, um, I guess, maybe in the first part of Green Lantern Corps or something. I'd, I'll have to. We'll have to get there. But, yeah, she eventually gets the ring in the first or second issue of Recharge, I think. Or is it the ongoing? Uh, let me see. Is there a first? Day? I just clicked on her. Uh, yes, Green Lantern, Co Green Lantern Quarter Recharge number one. Ah, first appearance, and then her death. Green Lantern Quarter Recharge number one. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so now we know. So yeah, she's not gonna have that ring for long. Sornik's gonna get that <laughs> ring pretty quickly. And speaking of, yes, uh, they mentioned Guy Gardner and Kyle Rayner. Uh, yes, we will see them next in Green Lantern Corps Recharge. Well, at least Cal. Uh, yes, we're going to talk some guy next week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, but that whole plot gets picked up in Green Lantern Corps Recharge. So, uh, so what do, what do you think is uh is ha is Hector Hammond one of the uh one of Hal's uh, major rogues or? Uh, you know, I'm. He is old school. I mean, we're talking going back to, you know, what, issues two or three or something along that. And, of course, he's going to be a big part of the uh, secret origin that's coming up, mm -hmm. which is which is interesting because, you know, John's had, um, you know, a, a, a few arcs before he really kind of delved into secret origin. You know, after it was after it was post Sinestro Corps War. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he went back and we, we got this retooled, rebooted really kind of slick 
would have made a better movie. I'm just saying, uh, version of Green Lantern's origin. And then, boom, you know, we were off to the races in the build up to Blackest Night, right? Mm-hmm. So, Hammond, I, I kind of like Hammond after what we see happen, you know, in these next, next, you know, two issues or next issue or whatever. Um, but in Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, uh, Hector Hammond actually, uh, ends up helping Hal out against uh, a family of Kryptonians that are not very nice. So uh, <laughs> I, I kind of like Hector, you know? I don't know. <laughs> oh, and because uh, uh, Lilith was telling me a few weeks ago, like she picked up like a, I guess a collection real cheap of uh, Secret Origin. Mm-hmm. But it must have been put out like around, around what was that? When was the movie out? 2011 or whatever? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they put like Ryan Reynolds on the cover of it. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, but and it also had an introduction, I guess, written by Ryan Reynolds. But oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, but I'm I pretty guess. sure it was just a collection of Secret Origin. But they put him on the cover. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get Secret Origin right here. Many <laughs> many little bound books. Ah, yes, yes, I remember that cover. <laughs> yes. Yes, excellent story. Oh, uh, yeah. Ivan Rice does the art. It's it's a it's, it's really really good. Um, and it gets into I, so rebirth was a new beginning, mm-hmm. and that leads directly into the Green Lantern ongoing series plus Green Lantern Corps. Yes, but Secret Origin is really Hal's origin, how he goes from being you know really selfish and kind of you know afraid of some things to becoming, you know, the Green Lantern that we see really in the first issue, you know, post-rebirth, you know, mm-hmm. we kind of skip over all the bad stuff, right? <laughs> but um, it's, and it's interesting, I, I think it's super interesting that, you know, it reprints, uh, let's see, because it's like in the late 20s, isn't it? The issues? I think it, it might start there. It might even go into the early 30s, doesn't it? it because... Yeah, 29 through 35. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's after Sinestro Corps War, yeah. That's like that's seven issues. Yeah. So seven issues uh, for Secret Origin. You know, it's got Aben Sur in it. It's got Sinestro. It's got Atrocitus. You know, it's... I, this would have been such an awesome movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but... I really, I find it so interesting that, you know, we went from Rebirth, and instead of doing the origin next, we just get right back into things. And I think that that was really a really intelligent move by, Mm -hmm. you know, Johns and Editorial to just, we're going to keep going, and then we will come back and give you that secret origin, you know, after we've, you know, accelerated through Sinestro Core War, which is, you know, Sinestro Core War is just so amazing. Oh, yeah. Kind of give kind of give you a little breather after Sinestro Core War. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I mean thinking back on it, I'm kind of glad they he did, you know they didn't jump into the origin you know issue one and stuff because you know it's kind of be like you'd be sitting there going, well, I'm waiting for him to catch up to the present day, you know, and exactly, the rest of the yeah. DC mm-hmm. universe. But yeah, no. <laughs> uh, all right, ready for the next issue? You bet. All right, let's swim on over to that. Uh. Green Lantern number five from November 20, 2005. Feeding Frenzy. Uh, Jeff Johns writer, penciler Ethan Von Skyver, inker Prentice Rollins, colorist Peter Steigerwald, uh, letterer Rob Lee, and editors Peter Tomasi and Michael Siglane. On a plane heading to Coast City, a man named Jerry talks with the passenger he's sitting next to about how he wanted a fresh start. As he offers his hand... The passenger reveals that he's missing one himself. It's William Hand. William Hand. <laughs> ah, old Billy Hand. <laughs> he has no desire for a fresh start, but retribution. Suddenly, the plane is caught in a bright light, and three gremlin-like creatures appear on the wing, speaking in German. They enter the plane and grab Hand. At Edwards Air Force Base, Hal Jordan is taking off his ring, about to go on his first test flight in years. When Colonel Sellers tells him that General Stone wants to see him. Stone says that there was a bizarre double murder on the beach last night, one of whom was a sailor, and Stone wants Hal's 
how to go help investigate. Heading to the beach, police are trying to secure the crime scene and what little was left of the bodies. Both heads were crushed open and their brains eaten out. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> and a tooth was left behind, too big for any normal animal. Green Lantern, however, knows of one and immediately heads into the ocean. Underwater, Hal finds a massive amount of sharks, which he assumes are the little ones, hoping to catch some of the bigger ones' meal. Sure enough, Hal's suspicions are soon confirmed. It's the shark. At Belle Reve, Hector Hammond is being washed down, bored that he has nobody interesting to listen in on. Suddenly, he becomes aware that the same gremlin-like creatures are in his cell, and he begins to panic. In the, ho in, uh, in the ocean, Hal, in a green cage, uses his ring to scan the shark's stomach, learning that he was responsible for the murders. Suddenly, the shark bites through the cage in Hal's force field. Hal realizes that the shark must have used his psychic abilities to make him feel fear. However, the shark's mind is confused. He's having trouble thinking and doesn't recognize Hal, but only desires to eat his brain. Okay, Venom. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> the shark and Hal go in a merry chase that ends when the shark rams them through the hull of a ship. The shark goes for the sailors, but Hal stops him with a green fish hook. The shark concentrates and finally recognizes Green Lantern. In Coast City, William Hand is deposited in a park in his Black Hand costume, but looking decidedly unhealthy. Suddenly, the grass and plants begin dying around him and his hand starts to reform, only to then fade away. Deciding that he needs more, he goes to a nearby hospital. On the ship, Hal is able to blow the shark back into the water. Unsure how long the battle will take, Hal has his ring get his battery. As he's in the middle of recharging, the shark jumps out of the water and pulls Hal under. Running out of options, Hal plunges the battery in the shark's mouth and the shark is rendered unconscious in the blast. <laughs> However, Hal and the shark soon find themselves pulled into an alien ship manned by the gremlins. At the hospital, Black Hand begins draining the life force out of everyone on the floor, leaving them dead and him with his hand. All right, so. I mean, we're, I mean, Johns isn't uh, uh, full, kidding around here. I mean, we've upgraded. I mean, the shark is now like, uh, mm -hmm. it's like something out of a horror movie. So is Black Hand. Hector Hammond, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, and they went really dark too, mm -hmm. you know, with, with all of those, which, you know, I, I get because they want to contrast, you know, Hal's light, you yeah. know, almost literally, right? <laughs> you know, so uh, it makes a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, scanning his stomach for, you know, <laughs> remains, <laughs> that's yes. pretty dark. <laughs> and again, I mean, this is what I, this is what I want. Uh, I'm always harping about this where it's like, I know the Green Lanterns are cosmic figures, especially here. We're going to be ramping up the more and more cosmic stuff. But I like, we get it, we get an issue on Earth, him dealing with one of his old enemies, the shark. Mm -hmm. But kind of with a new twist, you know, he's like more deadly and. Yeah. And, you know, and we get him and he's only just barely on Oa. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like it's outer space action. It's just like, hey, I'm on Oa. I'm going to, you know, fight with Kilowog because apparently I don't I like pain. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> and uh, then he's right back on Earth. So, you know, we're on it's very Earth centric, you know, all six of these issues that we're talking about. Yeah. As we're kind of set, trying to set up a status quo here, and was it this one where the yeah, the general calls him in to investigate? He's and he's like, he's like, you know, I didn't come back for you, the work for you as Green Lantern, right? But then, I'm sorry, what? I, 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 I said, uh, I, I think it was this issue when uh, he tells the general, he's like, I didn't come back to work for you because I'm, you yeah, know, as Green Lantern, you know that, right? <laughs> as Green Lantern, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep, absolutely. I mean, it's, and then we shift because wasn't. I don't remember what's coming up next, but uh, didn't one year later happen pretty soon after this? Ah, uh, well, right. Be well, before that, we'll get um, uh, Infinite Crisis because I believe uh, Infinite oh, Crisis right. is uh, well, number seven is like the, in the Infinite Crisis crossover because get Hal and Ollie again. So, ah, <laughs> good old days, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, should we do number six? Let's hop on it. All right, Green Lantern number six, December 2005. Man, we're already through 2005, Will. Yeah, I know. We're moving and grooving now. <laughs> although, although with some of the other series, we might have to jump back a little bit. But, all right. Yeah. All right, Black <laughs> black Sheep. <laughs> Where did that be? Uh, writer Jeff Johns, pencilers Ethan Von Skyver and Simone Bianchi. Uh, inker Ethan Von Skyver. Colors Nathan 
Eyring and Peter Steigerwald, Leonard Robley, and our Peter Tomasi, Michael Stiglin. All right. Uh, on a naval destroyer, the crew are looking for any sign of the Green Lantern. One of them sees a light, and a flying saucer soon rises from the ocean. The captain radios General Stone at Edwards. On the ship, the aliens have the shark secured and are about to begin experimenting on Green Lantern when Hector Hammond wakes him up. Green Lantern uh, quickly traps the aliens in small cages, and his ring informs him that the aliens are Crolotians, or gremlins, beings who are prone to tampering with a planet's natural resources, be they technological or biological, and accelerate their evolution. Sud <laughs> Suddenly, Green Lantern begins to weaken as Black Hand drains the life force from him. Hand says that Green Lantern will be the 23rd person he's killed, and he shouldn't mind, as death is good. <laughs> As Hand monologues, Hal has flashbacks involving his family. Suddenly, Black Hand is thrown off by an explosion from outside. The Air Force has come to investigate, only to be fired upon, and has returned fire. Cowgirl and Colonel Sellers are part of the squadron. Green Lantern begins trying to stabilize Hector Hammond when the shark breaks free from his container. Still hungry as the Crolotians begin trying to destroy Cowgirl's plane physically. Green Lantern jumps on, leading the shark, who attacks the Crolotians... Unfortunately, Black Hand, who can now fly, arrives and knocks Green Lantern into a nearby graveyard. In the graveyard, Black Hand rages against Green Lantern, saying that he had his chance at life and doesn't get to come back. He further assumes that Green Lantern hates death because it's more powerful than him. Green Lantern stops his rant by slicing off Black Hand's regrown hand and knocking him <laughs> into a hole he just dug. Uh, that's a punch in since he came back. <laughs> saying that without life, death has no purpose. Green Lantern then catches the crashing ship, saving Hammond. In the hole, Black Hand continues that death is stronger. At Edwards Air Force Base, Howe discusses the recent events with General Stone. They manage to capture Black Hand and Hammond, but the shark escaped. Hangar, 40, uh, escaped. Hangar 44 is about to be converted into a facility to contain Hammond, Hand, and what's left of the Manhunter android. Later, Howe takes the Crolotians and their ship to the... Sp Green Lanterns of Sector 2812, who speak German, which is actually Crolotian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a nice touch. <laughs> uh, I, love, I love that line. It's like, oh, you think the Egyptians were the only ones on your planet who stole our alien languages? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Hangar 44, Hector Hammond talks about how exciting the whole experience was, but the Manhunter merely drones on. No man escapes the Manhunters. Each time Hector communicates with him, uh, Hector, however, reveals that he knew the Crolotians were coming and that they made certain adjustments and alterations to his body and tells the Manhunter that things are different now with his voice. <laughs> Thoughts? Yay! <laughs> Yay! I know. Uh, the art, this issue was... Yeah, because we had like a, another artist on there, yeah. Yeah, it was much different than Carlos Pacheco. Uh, you know, it it wasn't bad. It was just different than what was came yeah. the first five issues. Yeah, it was kind of mm -hmm. abrupt uh, change. Exactly, and I think it goes back to uh, actually. I don't know that Pacheco comes back, does he? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, guess we'll have to see. Again, I remember the old stuff better because I've read those over and over. These ones I haven't read as much as many times, so mm -hmm. a lot of this is going to be a surprise for me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because <laughs> I've read them once and went on <laughs> exactly uh i thought there was something i wanted to say and i can't remember what i was going to comment on uh well you know black hand is already setting up blackest night oh yeah you could tell jeff john's got plenty of stuff mm -hmm. in the works for a while here yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man i wish i would remember what i was going to say <laughs> that's all right the second we log off i'll remember yeah it's, it'll be fine <laughs> uh, but but yeah i mean i again i more, more good stuff. Classic rogues, new stuff. They these gremlins. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, this first arc. The, well, it's really two arcs, right? When yeah, you get right down to it. First two little mini arcs are, you know, a really good reintroduction to to Hal, you know, his supporting cast, you know, the Green Lanterns, the core, and you know what's and then planting a lot of seeds that will bear fruit. You know, for Sinestro Core War and beyond. Oh yeah, mm. and Hammond playing a big role. So I mean, I wonder if that, did that influence them sticking him in the movie, or was 
I don't know. But it was interesting because he did play an interesting part in Rebirth yes. as well. Right. Yeah. So it uh but I don't do we see when does when does Hammond next appear? Is it in Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps? Because that'd be like ten years later. No, he's got to appear before that. Uh, I mean, he has. I I assume he appears somewhere again be- during Jeff John's run. Uh, in- Let's see. Uh, Hector Hammond after Green Lantern Rebirth. Here we go. Okay. War of Light. Uh, let's see, War of Light. Oh, he appears, appears in Infinite Crisis being broken out of prison along with several other supervillains. Well, I guess we'll get there. We're going to get there, kids. And then in the War of Light, uh, he's swallowed by the power belonging to Larfleet. I, I see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, interesting. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> oh, yes, the Blackest Night is first name dropped in this issue. Yes. Yes. And that's a good three and a half years out. I mean, we're not going to start that till the end of this year. So, I mean, how, you know. Because Blackest Night. Um, Hold on. Let me pull up the schedule. I'll tell you so, like some of the yeah. issues where it starts. Because, yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's not like it's. it was within like the next couple months uh, when these were coming out. Yeah, it was It was far in advance. Because I mean, you still have to get through Sinestro Core War, which was. You know, a, what, a 17-parter? It was a pretty big crossover as well, and it ran for a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, here we go. Down to the bottom, it looks like. Was it like in the 40s? Uh, yeah, it might have started around Green Lantern 43. So, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, okay. we're 30-some issues away. So, yeah, well, I mean, we're three years probably from, you know, their time from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's some... Uh, some excellent uh, plotting there. <laughs> you can tell Jeff Jones had some, pl- you know, some long term plans. Mm-hmm. He had, he had some uh, long stage Chris Claremont type planning uh, here. <laughs> yeah, and then so we go. We really kind of, you know, Secret Origins kind of. I think the next really big story that's coming after Sinestro Core War. Oh yeah, yeah. So we do Sinestro Core War, then Secret Origin. Then we have those little mini arcs. You know, we have Agent Orange, Rage of the Red Lanterns, uh, mm. Sins of the Star. Actually, Sins of the Star Sapphire was in Green Lantern Corps, I mm. think. Um, and introducing all of the other, you know, cores and the, the colors. And then that leads directly into the Blackest Night. And then after it, the next big one is War of the Green Lanterns, I think, with Corona coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Which leads into the New 52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> or once again another Green Lantern number one happens and Sinestro plays a big part <laughs> it's very on brand on brand it's, it it seems alright I'm, I'm sensing a pattern here uh, starting with like like uh, volume four it seems like every Green Lantern number one now that involves Hal Jordan it's, we either get Sinestro or Manhunters yeah and Maybe the next one should have both. <laughs> Actually, this one did have both. Yes. <laughs> yes. Jeremy Adams did his history. Yep. Did his research. Did oh, his yeah. Research. <laughs> All right. Anything else on this? Nope. Very enjoyable. And uh, we're uh, we're in for some really good Green Lantern stuff over the next several months. And a lot of Green Lantern. As they, you know, we started adding more and more series. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, what's up, uh, Phil? What do we have coming up next week? Well, next uh, <laughs> next episode, William, we're going to talk uh, two issues, a short little series, two issue series called Guy Gardner Collateral Damage. Okay. <laughs> and then in two weeks, we will talk the the Ron Thanagar War miniseries and the okay. Infinite Crisis special. So. All right. Mm, I'm trying to remember. I think it was Cal in the uh, Ron Thanagar War. That was. I think he was. I think he? so. Yeah. So that might be. Uh, yeah. And then in three weeks, we'll get to the Green Lantern Recharge miniseries, six issue miniseries. Nice. And then the week after that, we'll get to we'll start Infinite Crisis with Infinite Crisis number one and get back to this Green Lantern series with Green Lantern seven and eight. So. All right. Awesome. So those must be the, the uh, tie in issues for Infinite Crisis. Oh, yeah. Infinite Crisis. <laughs> Infinite, that's so on brand. Infinite crisis. Yes, the crisis will never end there at DC, kids. Just one crisis <laughs> after another, forever and always, infinitely. <laughs> yeah, 
just like these characters. They were here before you, and they'll be here long after you're dead. That's right. <laughs> uh, now, we do have Final Crisis coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to cover a little bit of that, because I know, I, at least on that on the schedule, there's a Final Crisis uh, one-shot. Rage, of the, Rage of the Red Lantern. It's on the schedule, yes. Yep. Yep, yep. Nice. So that's what you were saying. I was like, you, we have some of those Green Lantern events, but then some th- they throw them somewhat into like the uh, larger DC events, like Infinite Crisis, Final Crisis. Yep, absolutely. Not so, lots of good stuff coming. Not so Final Crisis. Yeah, <laughs> not so final. <laughs> final asterisk, not final. Final Crisis. <laughs> final for now. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, yes, kids, next week, Guy Gardner, Collateral Damage 1 and 2, so send us your thoughts, or send us your thoughts on this, send us your thoughts on the new Green Lantern number one by Jeremy Adams, uh, yes. mm-hmm. so, again, so, yeah, send everything, all the Green Lantern thoughts, uh, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail, 614-382-2737, that's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Caves and Lunatics, episodes, social media, merchandise, the Patreon. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Because uh, once again, starting starting in May and going uh, for four months this summer, once a month, Little Hellfire is going to get stinking drunk and cover one of the Heroes Reborn series with me. So <laughs> I think we're going to start. I think we're going to start with the Fantastic Four one. So. Buckle in, kids! And it's going to be on Patreon, Buckle. so she can swear as much as she wants at it. So, <laughs> uh, But yes, find everything at tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's tubespace.io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. Alright, Mr. William Allred, Master of the Core, Master of the Quantum Zone, uh, Master of Crossover Division, and... Uh, <laughs> The Legend of Zelda. Uh, where can people, <laughs> where can people find you and the uh, comics you create and the podcast you create when you're not busy gaming? <laughs> well, um, you can find me at Walred. That's at W A L L R E D. That's at Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and probably other social media that I don't remember at this point. Uh, you can find the comics uh, that I create. Uh, the first one, Crossover Division, is at uh, crossoverdivision.com. We actually have. A, we're live with a Kickstarter right now when we're recording. Uh, probably not when this uh, is on the podcast, but uh, if you want to check that out, you can do that at crossoverdivision.com slash KS or crossoverdivision.com slash Kickstarter. And if you'd like to check out Diary of Night, which is another book I write, uh, that's diaryofnight.com. And as Phil says, when I'm not annoying him, I annoy another podcaster. Uh, Kevin Joseph is a writer of Tart. We get together on Friday nights and talk to uh, Kickstarter comic book creators about their live projects uh, in a podcast called Explain Yourself uh, to try and boost indie comics on Kickstarter. And finally, you obviously have great taste because you're here listening to us talk about Green Lantern. So that means you must love Quasar as well. And you know, of course you do. If you'd like to find out more about Quasar, then uh, you can do that at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. Hey, boys, you look at the party. I love the party. I'll put it in my navel. <laughs> They aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. <laughs> Tom DeFalco wrote that. I know. I know. No, Seems like I'm getting a package every other day. Fantastic four. Uh, and of course, kids, he's back. I, of course, love how Jordan. I do. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us again next week. Guy Gardner, Collateral Damage. Uh, good times the universe is going to expand again kids again, we <laughs> pared down the one series now we're going back out absolutely yeah and Ion is not too too uh, distant in our future either so yeah that happens right before Sinestro Core War doesn't it I think we're covering that in July so it's coming soon yeah all right, kids, thank you for joining us. And remember, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. Good night. <laughs>